What is up, F and True followers and wrestling fans? You are watching the F and Brand of Wrestling and Entertainment here on YouTube.com. My name is JC Styles, and I am back with the TNA Impact review for March 21st, 2013. It was a decent night on Impact. Going to get right into it, give you guys my thoughts, and wrap this up for you so you guys have a review for tonight. We start off the show with Hulk Hogan. He talks about the lockdown. He talks about what happened last week on Impact. Then says that he has picked out four guys that he chosen to take the fight to Ace and Eight. He brings out Kurt Angle, Jeff Hardy, Samoa Joe, and Magnus. This winds up leading into a fatal four-way number one contendership for the right to fight Bully Ray for the TNA World Title later in the night in the main event. We then see a video package of Bully Ray giving all the inside scoops on the plans from the debut of the Ace and Eights all the way till the reveal of him being the president of the Aces and Eights at lockdown last weekend. We see this throughout the night. We then see the first match of the night tag team title action when Austin Aries and Bobby Roode defeated Chavo and Hernandez. When Daniels interfered, throwing Chavo off the top rope, which allowed Aries to roll up Chavo for the win. Now, this was actually a pretty good match. I liked it. Um... I'm really getting behind Aries and Rude as a tag team. I really like them as uh, I really liked Aries as a solo competitor. Uh, Bobby Rude not so much. He did do a lot in TNA as a solo competitor, but I liked him when they would pat him with James Storm as beer money. But that's just me. The same thing with Hernandez. Hernandez is a tag team wrestler. Can never really be the face of a company as the solo uh, TNA World Champion. He's always better off as a tag team competitor. Um, I kind of get the, the pairing of Chavo with Hernandez and vice versa, but I still not being able to see the connection there, but great tag team match, really good, had me interested. We saw, Ch uh, we saw Rude and Aries retain the tag team titles. We then go into the X Division Championship match. Kenny King picking up a win over Sanjay Dutt and Zima Ion the f successfully retaining his X Division Championship. Now, there's going to be every week, I guess there's going to be a triple threat X Division Championship match, and there's always going to be some kind of catch. I think the person who is on the receiving end of the losing pinfall, I believe, gets pulled out of the match, and someone else takes his spot, and the, p the person who didn't get pinned uh, to the end the match would still be safe in this triple threat match if that's what I heard today uh, explain it but Sanjay Dutt returned and this match was phenomenal this match made the whole night worth it it was a great match I've always been a big fan of the X Division now I know there's a lot of uh, stars that are going to be coming back uh, for this uh, one night only X Division uh, only pay per view uh, that TNA is going to be running along with some of the other special TNA pay per views that they're going to be doing, so I'm really interested in seeing who's going to return and hopefully they actually put these on TV uh, for a good price because I would actually like to order the X Division uh, the X Division uh, pay per view. We then see uh, Brooke Hogan arriving backstage, and we see the cameraman haggling her and asking her all these questions. She says, I'm not here for Bully or Hogan. I'm here for business. I am the VP of uh, the Knockouts Division. Then Bully uh, inside more scoop plans. We then uh, have Hogan and Sting backstage. Hogan's still sour of what went down and basically really just pushed Sting away further and told him, why don't you do what you do best and go hide up in the rafters and not talk to anybody and stew in your own thoughts. And just really gave it to, to Sting rudely. And I thought this was actually a pretty interesting thing uh, segment. We then see Taryn Terrell and Gail Kim in the ring. Gail Kim then uh, is asking Brooke to come out and fire Terrell for putting her hands on Gail uh, in several matches. Brooke then comes out and makes the announcement that she offered Taryn Terrell a lucrative contract to not only be the referee of the knockouts matches, but also an in-ring competitor. As Gail Kim turns around, she is hit with a spear and runs and rolls out of the ring and then runs off. We then see Bully sneak up behind Brooke after this segment and stalk her down the uh, walkway to end the segment and go to commercial. We then come back to Morgan defeating Joseph Parks. And not really too much here. 
We then see AJ Styles' interview, which actually led to Taz offering AJ a spot in the Aces and Eights as a prospect. Then James Storm comes out and says that he doesn't have the, the he's not the right AJ. He has he's uh, confused and really selling the AJ's currently silent character uh, very well. I think what they should start to do is um, instead of having AJ come out to the ring, maybe plant him during certain segments of the night. Plant him in the crowd with the hoodie and just sitting back, just having a blank stare on his face. Something like what they did with Sting back in WCW when Sting went from being the the um, you know hey you know the cool surfer gimmick to the the silent lonely crow type character you know just to really sell the AJ uh, the AJ character a little bit better. I like the current direction that they're going with. AJ's kind of silent and you know kind of like a lone horde, like a lone wolf, kind of like a. Um, a, like a Lone Ranger almost. It's really great. Uh, po basically, the whole story out of this uh, this interview was we uh, see we get no answers from AJ. Uh, we I almost thought that AJ was going to uh, join the Ace and Ace, and I thought that would have been really marked out because I know there's a lot of uh, a lot of um, a lot of negative. Uh, reactions on the whole Ace and H group, how it's all uh, WWE guys, uh, released WWE guys, and how they couldn't make it, so they came to TNA and they put them in this this little faction, and I thought that if they would have had AJ Styles, a homegrown TNA talent, I thought it would have made it, uh, legitimized it a little bit better. Um, I'm curious to see how this is going to progress and how this is going to react into next week's Impact. We then go to the main event when Jeff Hardy picked up the win over Samoa Joe, Magnus, and Kurt Angle. Great match. I wish the outcome was a little bit different. I would have liked to have seen Samoa Joe or Kurt Angle. The fans were really pro-Joe, pro-Angle tonight, and you can hear it in the crowd that it was really a split decision. Even though the Jeff Hardy won and the fans got a really good, they, he got a really good ovation for winning, but you could tell that in the, the arena in Chicago, I believe it was in Chicago, the arena really wanted Joe or Angle to win. And those were my picks, and I was kind of upset that we didn't get that. So, guys, leave your comments in the comment box below and let me know your thoughts and opinions on what you thought of TNA Impact tonight. And for the FM brand of wrestling and entertainment here on YouTube.com, my name is JC Styles, and I'll catch you later.